Are you ready to learn about arterial blood gases and ABG interpretation? I sure hope so, because that is what this guide is all about. As a respiratory therapist, or even an RT student, it is important that you know and understand everything there is to know about ABGs, and our goal is to help you do just that. The problem is, it can be very difficult at first to learn and master ABGs, but we're going to do our best to make that process much easier for you. An ABG can serve as one of the most accurate ways to assess a patient's clinical condition, which will help the doctor and respiratory therapist make important decisions on how to best treat the patient. That is one of the many reasons that you absolutely must learn this information. So if you're ready to get started, let's go ahead and dive right in. What is an ABG? An ABG stands for arterial blood gas and is a test that measures the blood levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide as well as the levels of acid base in the body. An ABG test is used to check how well the lungs are moving oxygen into different body parts and how efficiently they are able to eliminate carbon dioxide. Normally, healthy lungs move oxygen into the blood and push carbon dioxide out efficiently during inhalation and exhalation. This is what is called gas exchange. With this process, the body receives energy while making sure to eliminate waste. However, if the patient has breathing problems or a disease that affects their lung function, the ABG results can be abnormal. In just a moment, we're going to discuss how to determine when an ABG is abnormal and what actions you should take. What are the normal ABG values? For you to better understand the key elements in an ABG test, it is important for you to know the definition of all the normal values. First, you have the pH. This is used to measure the acidity or basity of the blood in the body. Next, there is partial pressure of oxygen, or a PaO2. This refers to the amount of oxygen in arterial blood, and it shows how efficiently oxygen is transported from the lungs to the blood. Then there is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, or PaCO2. This measures how efficiently carbon dioxide is transported to the lungs to be removed from the body. Next is bicarbonate, or HCO3. This measures the amount of a form of carbon dioxide known as bicarbonate, or bicarb, that is in the blood. Normally, bicarb is transported into your lungs through your blood and then is eliminated upon exhalation in the form of carbon dioxide. And finally, there is oxygen saturation, or SpO2. This measures the degree to which the hemoglobin contained in your red blood cells is saturated with oxygen. These key elements all have different normal values, so we must talk about their ranges. The normal pH ranges from 7.35 to 7.45. The normal partial pressure of oxygen ranges from 75 to 100 millimeters of mercury. The normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide ranges from 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. The normal bicarb ranges from 22 to 26 milliequivalents per liter, and the normal oxygen saturation ranges from 94 to 100%. It is important to keep in mind that normal value ranges may vary slightly in different publications, but these are typically the values that you will need to remember, especially in regards to the TMC exam. How to interpret an ABG It goes without saying, but knowing how to interpret an arterial blood gas is a very, very important skill for respiratory therapists. ABG interpretation is especially important in critically ill patients because it helps the healthcare team determine the best course of action in deciding how to treat the patient. In order to truly learn ABG interpretation, you must first learn and understand the normal values, which is why we mentioned them for you already. If you already have a good understanding of the ABG normal values, then you can keep on listening. But if not, it may be wise for you to hit pause now and look over them some more. If you need to take a few minutes to review them again, you can do that now, or you can consider writing them down on a piece of paper to use throughout the rest of this section. But you're listening now, so I can only assume that you're ready to go. So let's keep moving. Step 1. 
Obtain and run the ABG sample. First things first. In order to be able to see the ABG results, you must obtain an actual arterial blood sample from the patient. We'll discuss how to stick an ABG later on, but for now, let's focus on the interpretation part. After you have obtained an arterial sample, run the sample through a blood analyzer and have the results. Now we can figure out what the results mean. Step 2. Look at the pH to determine if it is acidosis or alkalosis. The first thing we need to determine is if the pH is acidotic or alkalotic. Again, the normal value for pH is 7.35 to 7.45. If the pH is less than 7.35, it's acidosis. If the pH is greater than 7.45, it's alkalosis. Let's discuss some examples. If the pH is 7.26, this is less than 7.35, so we know it has to be acidosis. If the pH is 7.49, this is greater than 7.45, so we know that it has to be alkalosis. If the pH is 7.39, this falls within the normal range, so we know that the pH is normal. Is everything making sense so far? If so, let's keep going. Step 3. Identify if the issue is respiratory or metabolic related. In this step, we'll look at the carbon dioxide and the bicarb in order to determine if the issue is a respiratory issue or a metabolic issue. To make this simple, remember these two tips. Carbon dioxide is being regulated by your lungs, whereas bicarb is being regulated by your kidneys. If the carbon dioxide value is abnormal, meaning that it falls outside the normal range, while the bicarb value is normal, this would mean that you have a respiratory issue. If the carbon dioxide value is normal, meaning that it is within the normal range, while the bicarb value is abnormal, this would mean that you have a metabolic issue. So basically, more carbon dioxide equals acidosis. More bicarb equals that it's more basic. Now let's look at an example. Let's say the pH is 7.26, the carbon dioxide is 51, and the bicarb is 25. How can we interpret this ABG? Looking at the pH, we can see that this is acidosis, since 7.26 is less than 7.35. Looking at the PaCO2, we can see that it is elevated above the normal range, which is abnormal. This indicates that there is a respiratory issue. And looking at the bicarb, we can see that it falls within the normal range. This also helps confirm that there is a respiratory issue. So, now we have confirmed that the pH is acidosis, and we looked at the PaCO2 and bicarb to determine that there is a respiratory issue. This ABG can be interpreted as respiratory acidosis. Are you still with me? If so, let's go through another example, shall we? Let's say that the pH is 7.26, the PaCO2 is 38, and the bicarb is 19. How can we interpret this ABG? First, by looking at the pH, we can see that it is acidosis, since 7.26 is less than 7.35. Looking at the PaCO2, we can see that it falls within the normal range, so this tells us that it is not a respiratory issue. Looking at the bicarb, we can see that it falls below the normal range, which tells us that we have a metabolic issue. So now we have confirmed that the pH is acidosis, and we looked at the carbon dioxide and bicarb levels to determine that there is a metabolic issue. Taking that into consideration, this ABG can be interpreted as metabolic acidosis. Now let's keep going. Step 4. Identify if it's compensated or uncompensated. After identifying whether the ABG sample is acidosis or alkalosis, and whether it's a respiratory or metabolic issue, now we must observe the compensatory component of the ABG results. To do so, be sure to remember these two tips. When we have a respiratory problem, our body will compensate with more bicarb. When we have a metabolic problem, our body will compensate with more carbon dioxide. Now let's talk about metabolic compensation. For example, when we have respiratory acidosis, the body will try to compensate by increasing the amount of bicarb in our system. Bicarb is a base, so one of its functions is to try to neutralize the acid that is causing the problem. When we have respiratory alkalosis, it's going to do the opposite by decreasing the amount of bicarb. 
For us to conclude that there is compensation, the increase or decrease of bicarb has to go outside the normal range. In other words, it has to be lower than 22 or higher than 26. If the bicarb is still within the normal limits, you can conclude that there is no compensation going on. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say that the pH is 7.29, the PaCO2 is 51, and the bicarb is 47. As we have already learned using the previous steps, we can conclude that the pH is acidosis because it is less than 7.35. Now we need to identify if it is a respiratory or metabolic problem. The PaCO2 is elevated above the normal range, which indicates that there is a respiratory issue. So the ABG interpretation would be respiratory acidosis. Now we need to look at the bicarb to determine if it's compensated or uncompensated. The bicarb level is 47, which means that the body detected that there was acidosis, so it tried to compensate by increasing the amount of base in the system. So this tells us that there is definitely a compensation going on. Now we must decide if this is full compensation or a partial compensation. To answer this question, we need to look back at the pH. Since the pH of 7.29 is outside the normal range, this means that the compensation was not enough to bring the pH back to normal. That tells us that it is only partially compensated. So taking everything into consideration, this ABG can be interpreted as partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Remember, a partial compensation only occurs in an abnormal pH because the compensation is not enough to bring the pH back to normal. For it to be fully compensated, the pH has to fall within the normal range. I hope this is making sense so far. Now let's talk about respiratory compensation. When we have a metabolic problem, always remember that our respiratory system will compensate by regulating the amount of carbon dioxide in the blood. For example, when we have metabolic acidosis, the body will compensate by decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is associated with acidity, so when the body detects that there is acidosis, it will try to compensate by decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide in our system. When we have metabolic alkalosis, our body will do the opposite. It will try to compensate by increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in our system. For us to conclude that there is compensation, the increase or decrease of carbon dioxide has to go outside of the normal range. In other words, it has to be lower than 35 or higher than 45. If the carbon dioxide level is still within the normal range, you can conclude that there is no compensation going on. Let's look at an example of respiratory compensation. The pH is 7.51. The PaCO2 is 51 and the bicarb is 42. As we have already learned using the previous steps, we can conclude that the pH is alkalosis because it is greater than 7.45. Now we need to identify if it is a respiratory or metabolic problem. The PaCO2 is elevated above the normal range, which would typically indicate that there is a respiratory issue. However, the bicarb value is also elevated. Remember that carbon dioxide is acidic and bicarb is basic. We've already decided that the pH is alkalotic, which indicates that there are more bases in the blood. So this ABG interpretation would be metabolic alkalosis. Since we have a metabolic problem, the next step is to look at the respiratory system. In this case, we see that the carbon dioxide is elevated above the normal range, which tells us that there is some compensation going on. Now we need to determine if this is a full compensation or a partial compensation. To answer this question, we need to look back at the pH. Was the compensation enough to bring the pH back to normal? The answer is no. This indicates that there is only a partial compensation. If the pH would have been within the normal range, then it would be a full compensation. But in this case, it is only partially compensated. So taking everything into consideration, this ABG can be interpreted as partially compensated metabolic alkalosis. Whew, I hope you're still with me. I know this information seems heavy, but with time, practice, and repetition, ABG interpretation will become second nature for you. So, there you have it. That wraps up this guide on arterial blood gases and ABG interpretation. I truly hope that this information was helpful for you. As we said before, understanding ABGs is definitely one of the most important things that is required of respiratory therapists and respiratory therapy students.
That is why I cannot stress to you enough how critical it is for you to go through this information until you truly know and understand it like the back of your hand. If you need a more in-depth review of the information that you will see on the TMC exam, you can find it on our website at respiratorytherapyzone.com. Thank you again for listening all the way to the end. I wish you the best of luck on your journey to becoming a respiratory therapist. And as always, breathe easy, my friend. <laughs>